Welcome back YouTube, uh, this is Peter or Masculinism here and we're going to go over the Canadian Nationals Finals match right now. We have an actually interesting one, uh, obviously the best deck in the format, Lexi Livewire uh, by Isaac Kurt is playing against Katsu of all things in the final here um, by Maxim. So Maxim had the choice, uh, he puts uh, Lexi on to go first to get that advantage going second here. and. Basically, what I'm looking for in you know both players' hands is getting those big turns. Katsune really needs to have those really big explosive like on hit turns, making the Lexi block take a lot of cards out of her hand to be able to like win this matchup and have those explosive turns. Lexi can really just do her game plan so efficiently uh, with all the all her good cards, just like are just so efficient, so good, especially in aggro mirrors, just doing so much. Does load a Falcon Wing on turn on turn zero, which is really good. Um, that's going to be one of the things that if he has a Rain Razor, starting off with like a four to five arrow hand, just really, really, really good to start off this game here. But looking at Kadachi into a a double strike here, so going super, super wide on this turn, there's probably going to be multiple mask momentum triggers here because he can dodge you twice and double strike twice to threaten that mask momentum multiple times. Uh, we'll probably see him use that Hornet Sting if there's another double strike coming in, but uses the Katsu ability currently, or at least thinking about it, uh, because that, the, that double strike is going to. He does banish the double strike. Let's see, thinking about his play. What do you grab here? If he has, like, I think the only thing he could grab is if he had a surging, he could get whelming. He could go surging whelming after this double strike, and then double strike after it with the second thing. Uh, chooses not to, not to, not to Katsu, and instead says, do you want to give me the Hornet Sting on turn one, or block with a card here? Or let him draw a card. He doesn't have Katsu for the rest of the turn though, so even if he draws like, uh, if he has a surging and then gets into like a, a Bonds or a Descendant, it's not going to be as explosive as it could be. He doesn't have a Graveyard yet, so Bonds doesn't really have text on it besides just coming in for like another 4 go again. Uh, that line is very good against Lexi, turning off the hero ability, not allowing them to flip cards anymore. So he can never get a frostbite if he puts an ice card on the bottom or anything like that. Let's see what we're looking at. It does look like it is a Winter's fight in Arsenal here for Isaac. And we have that Falcon Wing we're looking at a couple arrows. We're looking at a tar pit trap, a rain razors, and an endless arrow, I believe, in an, an ice card. So just thinking about it, let's see if he takes. Okay, puts the tar pit trap in front of it. Does give tar pit trap a read. This one's a interesting defense reaction that came out of the outsider set, being able to like stop on hit effects uh, from things that have go again. So decides just to Kadachi here. Let's go again. They poke another one. Isaac takes it. And then he has a red whelming here, I believe, coming in for three. So he had whelming, didn't have uh, didn't have the surging in front of it to start off that combo line, but still it's presenting a lot of on hits on this turn, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, is a little scary that Isaac gets to have like the double arsenal with three cards in his hand, so having that five card hand first going through and only had to take six damage to get that get that turn flips over lexi does indeed give him the frostbite to slow his opponent down something that's like katsu is like pretty underrated for is being able to actually block like a lot more efficiently than a lot of these other aggro decks like being able to keep a two card hand and kadachi kadachi plus coming in with another attack or popping that hard and cross trapped and coming with you know, just having, you know, surging into whelming is like a pretty solid, like, 9 damage turn off 2 cards. 
and your equipment there. So it's come the this winter's bite. It's gonna take that card from Katsu's hand. Um, something that Katsu that I want to highlight here is against Katsu, Isaac is playing these perch grapplers to you know have that extra block. There's a lot of on like on hits because of obviously Katsu's uh, hero ability being an on hit on every single attack, but just like it's a, Katsu can be so explosive and to limit his output potential with those perch grapplers is pretty pretty good. Just have an Art of War non block in his hand. One of them would be Art War's really good I'm trying to be explosive here, but it's just not gonna be the not gonna be the time for that. Isaac does have Rain Razor's in hand, chooses not to use it and actually pitches it instead for resources. I it's like the only he did block with that tar pit trap, so he did not have uh, another thing to go here. And does put a plus one counter on it. So it does want to set up, he's putting it for five, he's like, hey, give me all the cards and just leave you with one card in hand. If you want to double block this, if you single block this, I get to let it face up and then put the other card face down to have, you know, a theoretical six card hand if I want to. Um, Maxim does block just for three here. Takes two. So the endless arrow is going to bounce back to his hand. Let's use the second activation of Voltaire, puts it face up, gets to put the other card face down. So does it get to present, you know, eight damage, a frostbite, and discard a card from his opponent's hand, which is, even on uh, this turn, it's just like a good tempo play. Gets to have, you know, a setup for the next time. But does it get to use this Frost wrap here. I just had to pitch for that frostbite. And then coming in for the C and C for six here. C and C just be so good against Lexi being able to, you know, they they had to use their arsenal spot at all times. So there's usually, you know, always something in something in that zone. So Command and Conquer, you know, blocks for three. It's been like a powerhouse card for pretty much its entire inception to this game, so really good. Looking at Oh, is that triple arrow plus another ice quake in the Lexi's hand? So there's a lot of we're drawn two ice quakes here. Isn't a block probably keep that blue to ice quake from Arsenal after giving him that maybe endless arrow. It's a lot of uh, good on hits here for um from that Katsu side. Isaac. Loading up a double block, but thinking for a while here. Looks like he is eventually going to double block this here. Oh, never mind. Come on back. Alright, it does end up blocking for six here. Looking at it through, it does not have the card like uh, the hardened cross trapped anymore because he did uh use it on that cnc instead of like the searching line which is definitely a tempo loss for that katsu player because that is one of the, like, the best things that you can do as katsu is using that basically a free non-pitch can do a lot of like basically free spells at, at all times does have that tunic two three here on this turn First tunic trigger. Let's see, looking at a descendant gust wave. He looks like a whelming. It's a, a Mugenchi in a hundred in Maxim's hand at that Katsu side. Who's that ice quake? Pitches ice quake to Lord Voltaire. And then we got that drill shot coming in here. 4 7 on hit. Make another frostbite here. So a lot of taxing in the first early turns from. The Lexi deck being able to really abuse those ice cards to get in there it does pitch another red ice quick here because I believe the only ones in the list are red, so it doesn't have any more floating. So even if it comes back from this endless arrow at the end, we'll give him the frostbite, but we'll not uh net him what, but just full box entirely here the entire turn from Isaac. He's like, I ain't gonna do anything on this turn because I have the frostbite plus other stuff. 
does look at the breaking scales here. So it does prime, gets the gets the one breakpoint here. Does prime it for to be able to use it on another turn if he can find, you know, if he can find his angle to be able to do that. So looks pretty good. Isaac's gonna get that premeditate double arrow and a you know the namesake of Lexi at this point. You know that three of a kind. Be able to draw three cards just so insane. And basically always double load on this full terror, like very very little time so you ever whiff in this deck especially and that bolt and shot allows you to get that extra extra umph on these turns as well if you come into the second one speaking of bolt and shot he does have a bolt and shot right here coming in for six with go again demanding a two card block or he gets a pre uh, he gets that ponder token and a reload here and he can still flip it up with lexi to then load a second time so he can triple arrow on this turn so you just gotta block this one blocking this one for six here what else is isaac in his hand he has another endless arrow i see in that hand it's a good one that's another good one he can activate this quiver as well these are usually the three of a kind turns are the ones that you're thinking about activating quiver to get that extra that extra arrow in it does it have another blue to activate quiver it does just see it see if he gets an arrow on top it does look like he has another drill shot Looks like a blue drill shot though, so it's not gonna be like the max amount of goodness, but still hits an arrow off the top, uh, off the top with that quiver. Always a good sight to see. Looks like it's endless arrow and rain razors here. Something I will say is the production quality of this event was just absurdly good. Have the casters were really knowledgeable. Everything was really nice. The graphics, everything that really like when Ethan uh, Van Sant does a lot of the coverage. Uh, because it's just like crisp, clean, just seems like he r really has a passion for doing it as well. So it's really nice to see. Does Voltaire that second time to put that Endless Arrow up here for Isaac? Looking like he's just doing a plus one here. So he's not even, he's not doing a go again. He's going to set up that Rain Rangers that we also see in his hand with that blue drill shot. Maybe he gets to bounce out bounce this uh and this arrow back to his hand as well and he does get a ponder so having a lot of like redundant you know draw cards and bouncing back to his hand here so it loses a little bit of value but still i don't think he's going to care because of this next turn being so explosive here sees a another arrow puts that rain razors in that arsenal spot and passes it back over now kasuk has uh, a three card hand here first like time without a disruption spell Looking at pitching Lorderwind here to come in with this harmonized Kadachi. Seeing if he's just gonna go Kadachi Kadachi attack, but no, just Kad Kadachi the Command and Conquer here, especially is gonna slow Isaac down because obviously we know that he has the Rain Racers in Arsenal, but just another on hit effect that makes, you know, trying to slow Lexi down, keep the Katsu into it until he finds like one of those very, very explosive turns. Does have like most of the combo pieces in. Uh, the graveyard here. So if he does find a bond in one of those insanely large bond turns, he can use that to get that dishonor, to get the whelmings, to get you know descendants, and every basically everything is in there. So really going to extend that chain a lot. It also has the hundred wins in there. Um, so can get a lot of go again. I know playing Katsu is like pretty interesting these days because of all the on hits and all the different lines you can really build. Outsiders really brought a lot of like the different lines being able to be played and Bonds is just like such a good card and the fact that it works with both Descendant Gust Wave and Whelming Gust Wave is just you know the icing on top right there. Just so versatile these days but still that aggro game plan. Looking like Isaac's gonna cash in his armor here just give up one card instead does get to see the the if the top card is an arrow is another arrow gets that value here does get to ping the one basically the theoretical two of that arms here which is really good catches in that perch grapplers exactly as intended here so looking at let's see how explosive this uh rain razor turn is going to be tunic on two does get to play that rain razors the not good news for maxim that's a blue cold snap i've always been a fan of cold snap and these ice blues being able to give the it's just the extra the extra disruption if you can get him into your slot plus it also 
if it is in your arsenal, it does draw you a card and can freeze your opponent's arsenal. And there's a D react in there, your opponent always is part of me just gonna pitch it or have to give up that defense reaction for that turn. Just yeah, that cool stuff is pretty good play. Pretty good card to include here and in a lot of matchups here. Katsu, think about it right here. Does double block. Double whelming. He has yellow and reds in his deck. Okay. Because I know he was playing Mask of the Pouncing Links in other matchups, but this one he does have that Mask of Momentum versus the aggro matchup to, you know, all those on hits effects. So coming in for seven here with this Heat Seeker, this is going to be such an explosive turn. He has that Endless Arrow and that Heat Seeker. Does have the full four to three blocks in his in his hand. It does give out the Breeze Rare Boots, but is going to take that damage from the Drill Shot. Put the minus one on the Mask of Momentum here. All in all, good Raven's turn does uh, allow him to get a whole bunch of damage in, makes the makes the Katsu not have a hand again, chips down, takes multiple equipment like blocks and armor here. So looking good and going to a tunic three turn here. Let's do which is a yellow Bolton shot. Okay, here we go. We've got that uh that got that Falcon Wing that we know about coming in for four. Because it has that natural go again, so just another zero for four. No on hit, so easily can take this here. Let's see what he does next time. What's the next arrow gonna be? It's gonna be that more remorseless. You know, remorseless is like such a card that is punishes these go wide aggro decks a, a lot. It does come in for six here, and he gets to arsenal that last card here, which is another arrow, I believe. So Isaac sweeping his water has a big advantage on this turn. Does get that double block out of his opponent here. So has that 12 life lead with that arsenal going into his next turn. Let's see what Katsu has for us. Katsu hasn't ha been able to have like that pseudo five card hand uh, that Katsu really wants for this to go wide here. So. This is a good starter, you know, be like water. Um, this pretty much demands always a, always demands a three block. This card is like so, like so, so good because not only do you get, if it hits, you get to like make it into something else, but you're also gonna get that Katsu trigger. So you basically always get, you basically always get to have like the perfect outcome if be like water hits like at the start of the chain every single time. You always get to see uh, if you want to make it a surging to get that any either of the gust waves search up that through Katsu and all so does get that three block here Does get to go with uh, Kadachi for one does pitch that blue second Kadachi And then Preferably has that on hit effect with the mask momentum on that third chain here Let's See what Maxim has here it's thinking for a little bit. Just as has a, a hundred wins here for three. So if Isaac can go block on that first one, block on that second one, doesn't allow his opponent to get that pitch load arrow, have second arrow is pretty good. I know Lexi usually wants to have that three card hand. Does I just have another target trap to block it for three though? Good to see these traps like really come out in all these uh, different ranger decks with the printing of outsiders. Just have a lot of like on hit effect like uh, tax, which is really good. And just those the traps were just such cool cards that came out. Glad to see them uh, get used. Coming in with that uh, infecting shot here. It is a red, so it does come in for five with that blood rod, and he does have that hamstring shot to in his arsenal to come out after so he gets to go 5-5 five, five this turn and have a double on hit. Katsu does block for five here, doesn't want to get that blood rot. So you know a full block here. No, just three blocks and takes two. Probably gonna just arsenal that last card because the hamstring shot will make him pay one, but he doesn't have additional resources to pay unless he's gonna just Kadachi Kadachi pass with the blue. But he needs to really like set something up here, you know. He's twelve he's twelve life behind He's, you know, down a card advantage. It does look like an art war in his hand. Does not block, so hopefully he's open. Isaac has a, you know, just a lackluster turn one of these times, but it's very hard to 
hope for that win. Luxie just so has so many good arrows these days. So 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 powerful and everything. So Sierra shot for four here. No on hit, just has you know the extra life. Would hit for five if it hit. He's gonna take all this five, go to 14 here. I'm trying to see if he can keep this five card hand pretty efficiently. Just see a Bolton shot here, so this is another red, so it does come in for five. Uh, and threatens that that reload. I think he can bet if if he thinks his hand is good enough. I think he can bet the hand. Uh, pretty much the game here by you know taking this five, going to nine, hoping hoping the last card in his hand isn't that good of an arrow. It does look like he's just looking at the graveyard here. It looks like a codex of frailty here. If he's looking at the graveyard, it is indeed a codex of frailty. That's breaking that chain to get, you know, not only a ponder for the following turn and give your, his opponent a, fra uh, giving his opponent that frailty token. Just good to get, have that remorseless and remorseless coming in for five. So like, this is just like pretty much the perfect sequence for Lexi here because he gets a, your opponent's pretty much betting the game by taking ten here, and then you get to remorseless. If it hits for five, then your opponent just like doesn't have enough health to just like come in with a huge like combat chain that Katsu needs to try to kill Lexi from like 31 here right so does have to probably give one or two cards here does give two cards so the remorseless doesn't hit but man this looks like a pretty bad spot here for that Katsu player uh you know Isaac gets to have that that arsenal and come in no Katsu just has a an R War plus something just comes in with a surging strike here. So it comes in for four with go again. Um isn't threatening the Katsu trigger because he doesn't have any more cards in hand, but say sur like the way he can crawl back in this if it was like surging strike into, you know, like Gust Wave or Descendant from Arsenal here, uh is gonna be the start of it, but it doesn't just doesn't have anything. Uh just Isaac takes four, his opponent passes. His opponent's at nine now, so you're in range from basically any Rain Reaser's turn just to, to just die here from Katsu, so see how if or if Isaac can close it out here on this turn. Looking at it, thinking a bit more. He's gonna cast this one just right before he's gonna give them the ad additional information from Lexi here. So let's see if the Katsu player pitches more than a red, does just pitch the red. For Surging here gets that two block out. Does have it, that Falcon Wing for just for three go again here. Still has three cards in hand, so if he does go, you know, load arrow arrow. Does have the Rain Reasons here, and that wasn't no block from Katsu, so does just get to take five. So looking at, you know, the load of Voltaire coming through. It's coming in for six here. This pretty much demands, has to have to be a double block because of that last card is a arrow. He always dies, so. Did get the value, get the, the extra two pump from that range just to take his opponent down to four, uh, but did not close it on this turn. But such a good spot here for for Lexi, it would be pretty much a miracle for you know Katsu to come back here. Takes the first Kadachi, takes the second Kadachi. No, no, not the second Kadachi. Blocks the, blocks the tunic and just passes. Seems like that arsenal is just stuck. Seems like it's going to be like an, like an auto war that we saw from like turns prior to, but it just doesn't have the, the quantity of heart cards in his hand ever in these turns, you know. Slips up an arrow, loads one arrow for Voltaire, comes in for that, you know, lethal off that five, with the blood rod as well. So, you know, easy to block here, but. Additionally, comes in with another, another searing. He's gonna have to, but he also has a searing in arsenal, so it, that does look like a red one in arsenal. So he takes two here, gives two, has another one. And his arsenal has to block with that mask momentum and that card, just bleeding out until you know he eventually dies through these these five card hands from uh, from Lexi. Looks like it's wrapped up here uh, from that Lexi side. Just the mental like just like mid like. 
mid-range game that Lexi can play and all these turns are just like so insane like all these on hits just matter so much Katsu never got to have like that five card hand from the very beginning turns with all that all those ice cards so only does block for five here so you know it takes one looks like it just has a whole bunch of two blocks in his hand so unfortunate to see but Let's see if he has double arrow you know has that heat seeker just has the four and you know Isaac winning the game here Isaac the third Canadian champion after you know losing to uh losing to Yuki in like the original one and then now you know coming to the finals winning that finals you know feels probably feels good for him you know a man of uh not many words Isaac but you know he's always proud always good so good to see him win always a nice guy in that in the community so that's gonna be that Canadian top eight match here some good play from both sides but you know just the 41 percent win rate from Lexi you know you know it's feeling free you know it's pretty good and you know I'll see you guys in the next one let's see if uh you know Lexi doesn't win all these nationals throughout this entire year all right see you guys